we've been looking at one of the screens of Google Analytics. Let's look at a few more. You can drill down into all of these pages to get even more information. But I'm going to jump over now to the acquisition screen. Audience basically is who is visiting your website. Acquisition, how are you getting that traffic? And behavior, what are they doing on your site? So if we write that down, audience visits your site, acquisition, <clears throat> how do they visit your site, and behavior. What uh, do they see on your site? And we'll talk about conversions in a moment. Not everyone has that one right away, but we'll talk about setting it up. So looking at the acquisition screen, if I click there, this has got details and also overview. If I look at the overview, they call them channels. And I've got organic, direct, social, and referral. Then you might have more. You might have an email channel. You might have a paid channel. So channels, organic. This is tra these are all traffic via somewhere. So traffic uh, via. Google search. Someone goes to Google, they search a keyword or a phrase or whatever, they find your site and they click. That was an organic search result. It was an acquisition via organic search. We've got direct. User goes directly to a page. So for example, they know that if they go to victor.com slash sales, if they simply type that into their browser, that's a direct acquisition. They went directly to a page. They typed the address. If they typed the, your, your, home, your home page directly to their browser and went to your site, that's direct. Um, if they bookmarked your, your blog page, and then they click on the bookmark link to go back to your page, your book, your blogs directly. That was a direct acquisition. We have social, pretty self-explanatory, which is uh, traffic via Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or. Google Plus or whatever, a social network, traffic from a social network. And you got referral. A backlink. That word has different uh, AKAs. We have backlink, incoming link, uh, inbound link. Basically, uh, a link from another site, a referral. You were, someone was on some site, and they referred your site. There was a link from their site to your site. So Google can track all of this, all of this acquisition data. There's also one uh, email, so uh, clicks from an email. And then also, I believe they call it paid. So clicks from AdSense. When you see paid results on a Google search and someone clicks, that's a paid channel and it'll show up here. So within this time period for this client, there haven't been there hasn't been any activity on email and paid. There haven't been any emails sent out to any people with the link in a campaign. And there haven't been any AdSense campaigns set up to get traffic either.
So this shows us here that for this particular client, 52% of the traffic in the last month came from a Google search. The next percentage, one quarter, direct. People went directly. That's tying into that other statistic about there being two, on average, two views per session. Well, 25% of the traffic is directly going somewhere. The next of 11% is traffic from social media. And the next, a little bit less, it's just about the same, referral. Links from other websites. So again, some data in total, then conversions. We'll, we'll talk about conversions again very soon. Here's the data overall. And I can go in directly. For example, if I click on social, that'll show me Facebook is the number one social network I get traffic from. Second is Yelp. You might not have thought of Yelp as a social network. Google counts it as, but traffic from Yelp. And then it drops down very quickly. Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Reddit, Weebly. I wouldn't count Weebly as a social network, but they do. And YouTube. If I back up to referral, for example, at the moment, the most traffic that came was from this spam site, rankchecker.online. There's ups and downs and there's bouts of traffic from spam sites. Now that they have released new extensions, many more websites are popping up, many more spam websites. So .com is not the only kind of site, of course. There's .com, .net, .org, .biz, .co, and a bunch of new ones like .online, .info, .condo, .ninja, .guru, .xyz. There's so many of these new ones out there, many more spammers. So within this last month of a time period, this brand new spam site has started to visit the site. How can I tell it's spam? Well, you get a sense of this as the longer you do it. But if I wanted to confirm, I will open that site. Hopefully, I don't regret it. Let's see, rank checker online. Keep my hand ready on the close button over here. SEO platform number one, built for agencies, SEO experts, and webmasters. Track daily changes in your rankings, get advanced website analytics, track your competitors' activity. Track your competitors' possessive activity and improve your rankings simply and efficiently. Yep, spam. Badly spelled. Bad grammar. And uh, I'm trying to sell something. E. Comp. Marketing? Is that a real word? Well, I guess that's the name of their company, from High Power SEO. This is all fake about us. So, wait a minute, I clicked on, didn't I click on, I clicked on Rank Checker Online, and it took me actually to RankSonic.com. What they're trying to do is they're trying to prey on the naivety of um, first time or early, you know, uh, not experienced web users. Uh, they've got a product that perhaps I want. If I'm naive, I'll think I want these guys because they're going to help me get more traffic. So they're trying to get traffic, they're trying to get leads. Just like in the real world, maybe I go to some networking event and I'm going to talk to everyone, even though maybe not everyone really wants my service, but I'm going to network. This is sort of a way to do that digitally. So is this, they're, they're visiting the website or are they sending email or what are they doing? At the very least, their website is visiting our website. 
there's traffic coming from that website. So perhaps they have links on their website over to this website. Most websites nowadays sort of communicate to each other. So if I put a link from my website to another website, that website will know about it. This website put a link to our website, so now we find out about it. And if I didn't know they were a spammer, I might want to check into them and maybe hire them. You don't want traffic from spammers. The search engines look at all of this and look at all of these factors. The search engine, even though I got more traffic from Rank Checker, Google is going to see actually the traffic from 91X, a legitimate organization that's been around for 30 years, that's much more legitimate to Google with less hits than these guys that probably were invented in the last year. So there's a lot of these factors to deal with in SEO that we talk about in the SEO class, but the short answer is no, you don't want links and you don't want traffic from spammers because the search engines sort of operate in, a, in the concept of guilt by association. So if you've got a lot of traffic from spammers, the search engines will think you're a spammer and that's not good. So legitimate sources of traffic, 91X. This client does have a relationship with local radio stations. They put out uh, <clears throat> ads on these radio stations. So there's Magic 92.5, 91X. <clears throat> they, this restaurant gets reviewed. So they're being reviewed over at Eater.com, the LA uh, branch of Eater, San Diego Reader, the LA Times. And then here's another spam site, keywordsmonitoringyoursuccess.com. You're going to tell that they're spammers <coughs> also simply by what they're named. Rank checker, keywordmonitoringyoursuccess.com. <coughs> LA Magazine, page two, LA Times, San Diego gift card. <coughs> this is probably OK. Gayote, Gayot, Gayot, maybe? FreeVideoTool.com. TV Food Maps, DuckDuckGo. Monetization, King.net. So I'm going to set this again for one year of data. There was a time that traffic to money.com was coming here. Best SEO software.xyz. But what happens is, see that? These bouts of traffic. Within a year, this website visited this site a lot, but then they stopped. They were shut down. They were reported. At the moment, rank checker. They're active at the moment, then they're going to get shut down eventually. It may be very close now. There's other things to look at there, but again, you don't you don't get a lot of it unless you've got it set up, but I'm going to move on to another section. Any questions on the acquisition screen? Let's look at uh, behavior. This one's interesting as well. Google Analytics, once you set it up, can tell you where your traffic is coming from and who they are. And it can also tell you the, the path that people took on your site. They visited your home page, and what else did they visit? So under Behavior Overview, it's just showing here. Number one result is people mostly go to the home page, then the menu. Then the contact page, book a table, etc. Oh, this is good here. This um, one of our most recent blog posts has been getting a lot of traffic in this time period, more than the Wheatla Coche. Let me put that again into one year. 
in a year, the number one is the is basically the same three. Then the fourth place is the history of barbecue in Spanish. Book a table, the Maguey plant blog post, choose your location, the Huitla Coche blog post, the Pulque blog post, and then about. So here, blog posts, a contact page, blog posts, the home page. Those are the things that are getting the most traffic here. That should be telling you something. You should have a contact page. You should be writing blog posts. Obviously, this is data for this client, but I see it over and over on various clients. Blog posts, contact page are very popular. What are the search terms? that people are using hmm. seems to be empty at the moment right, so here's another item behavior flow this will show you visually your traffic on your site. People start on the home page, about 3,000 hits. Then next they go on to uh, the menu, for example. There's some drop-off. From the menu, people after that, they go over here to, the, to this other page, that other page, etc. Let's say a person starts on the contact page. Well, from the contact page, they're more apt to then go back home or choose a location. And it tells you all the levels, where they start off with and how deep they go to, into your site. So by the third time they're deeper into your site, it's already dropped off a lot. And studies show if you can't get your point across on your website within three clicks, people might get frustrated, people might leave, and you're losing traffic, you're losing sales perhaps. So that's why, like this restaurant, the most important stuff's right on the home page. I'm going to show this one about conversions, and then I'm going to explain conversions because not everyone has this. Conversions are our goals. We've got a goal set up of uh, this is oh here it is the book a table. We've got a goal for people to book a table in San Diego. 109 completions in this month, the conversion rate is, uh, is 1.27. So what this is, is we're tracking how many people have completed a goal in this time period. So you have to set this up. It's not here automatically because not everyone cares or not everyone has a goal of booking a table. The source of this is when people search on Google. People are looking for maybe Mexican food restaurants. They find the client, they go into the site, then they book a table. Then, the, then it was counted as a conversion. They completed something. And it shows here 50% comes from a Google search. The next percentage, 30%, is that people go directly. They might have the address bookmarked. They might have the address memorized. They go directly to it and then it drops off very quickly. Bing. Bing search. People search on Bing. They find the page, they book a table, it counts it. From Yelp. Even though we get a good amount of traffic from Yelp, it looks like less people actually book on Yelp directly. There was one table booked from someone coming from 91X. Can direct also be like if they're clicking from page one to page two? 
No, because it's not direct anymore. That does have a traffic flow. What's the one with the M in front of it? Mobile. Oh, Someone visited on the mobile Facebook. Mobile Yelp. All right, so the um, the way you set this up is we have to back up to the admin screen. Under the admin screen, under the view column, we have goals. So let me switch over to my test account over here to show you what that's like. So. I've got this Victor's Bakery view goals. If I click goals, then it brings me to this wizard for me to create a goal. And I can do it two ways. Manually, by a new goal, or import a goal that someone else already created. I'll look at import in a moment, but I, I'll go to the new goal first. From here, do I want to use a template or custom? I'll start with template. So it says three items here, one, two, three. My goal setup will be a template, continue. I give it a name. For Victor's Bakery, I want to make a goal called, um, uh, called the shop. I want to check, I want to track this how many calls I've gotten to the shop. I can have multiple goals, I can organize them in different ways, I'll just leave that alone. Now, how you are able to verify that, the way you verify all of these things, there has to be some sort of action that happens that it can keep track of. For example, destination, duration, pages per screen, pages or screens per session, or an event. So let's say I've got a button on my website. This is call us now. It's on the it's on the about page. So I can set up that the destination is the way that I count that it that it was reached. Now in this particular case that might not be the best way because that that just simply tells me that someone went to the call now page. That doesn't really say that they called. Perhaps the event would be better, that they clicked the button that says call now. That's a much higher indicator that this was a real goal completed. But what if they clicked the button and they said, whoops, never mind, and they canceled right away? So again, this, this, this is not magic. It has to have some, some kind of trigger to count it. Oftentimes, it's going to be destination. This one says thanks.html is the example. So, for example, I have that restaurant. If we want to confirm that a table was booked, there's a process. Someone clicks from the home page, book a table. They fill out all their information. Then they click submit. Then after submittal, there's a brand new page that appears that says thank you for booking a table. That page, that end result, that destination is most likely the way that I can track this, that it was effective. There's no way to get to that thank you page unless you book the table. So be careful here. Don't just simply select a page on your screen if you could get to it anyway with, besides clicking around the site. You could create a goal about duration. If someone is, you know, you could, uh, you could create a goal called uh, blog readability popularity. And if you make a, a goal of five minutes, people are spending five minutes on your site. People are reading your blogs. That could be a way that you um, count that as a conversion because they're spending time on your site. I'll do destination. And then three, okay. Well, how do we confirm that? Yes? What about placing an order? Like they click on the button to place an order. Yeah, that could be it. That could be an event. The, on the event of that click, placing the order. 
But what about if they place the order and then before they put their credit card they cancel? That's, that's abandonment right there, so that might not be the most accurate way either. It's really going to depend on the site and how you've got the site set up. But depending on your site, clicking that might be the result. For this client, it might be one more page where it actually says, thank you for ordering. So to confirm that they got to that page, I have equals to begins with or regular expression. If it says equals to, use my screen for an app and thank you HTML instead of that. So if I've got a, if I've got a a page called call us .html, if a person got to that page it would count it. Again, that only means they got to that page. That didn't mean they actually called. So what if I created a page that after I program my site so that when they click the call button they call me and then when, when everyone hangs up then they get a brand new screen that says thank you for calling us. So call us, thanks. Optional value and optional funnel. Assign a monetary value. So I'm gonna say that every time someone calls me that's worth a certain amount. It's optional because you can't put a, a value on everything very easily. Because simply someone calling us doesn't mean we made a sale. Doesn't mean we, we did anything you know, tangible, really. But the way this can be set up is that every time someone calls us, that's worth $1.25. Or $125 or something. So every time someone reaches that goal, Google will tell me you reached the goal, you earned $1.25. In this case, it doesn't really make sense, so I won't put anything. Funnel is a way for you to be more specific, because here I said, if anyone gets to the Call Us page, that's a win. But actually, if I set it up, first a person is on the Home page, then they go to the Order page, then they go to the Call Us page, that's the funnel, that's the path, and they have to go here, and then here, and then here, and then once they've gone through these steps to the call us, okay, now we'll count that as a success. That's optional. You might not know how people are visiting your site. You have to do them in that sequence. If you put... Uh, another page you want to in between or something? Is that this, it has to be in this sequence. Um, it has to be that they went, this is the funnel, you know, a funnel only goes one direction, so it, it has to be in the sequence. You know, I, I was thinking, if they went to the four home order and then went back to another yeah. page and then then we have a very indecisive buyer. So that, that, that wasn't it wouldn't count it. If I make it required like this, then it's even, uh, it's even it's an even higher bar to reach. Mm -hmm. If I don't put required, then people could go out of order and it will count it if they hit those pages. Three pages. Yeah. So whatever makes <clears throat> whatever makes sense, and we can make multiple of these. So I can make you know, buy now version 1 and buy now version 2, and one where I be specific and one where I'm not. And then Google is going to give me all this data and I can see, oh, okay, I do see people are kind of bouncing back and forth. They're not going direct. So more setup and more data gives me more answers. And I'll save that. Done. So now on my reporting, I would have conversions. Nothing has happened at all yet because I just set it up, called the shop. But now this would keep track of that, and if I had set up goal value and so forth, like that client that I showed you that was getting like a, what was it, like a 1% or 3% or something, conversion rate, back up. Uh, right there.
So on the client here, they've got a 1.27 conversion rate. This is keeping track that within this time period, people have gone to this page to reserve. You see, this is a very powerful, powerful thing, Google Analytics. This is like one of the most important things a, a web designer, a web developer needs to know. Uh, you, if you have your own business, this is also highly desirable for you to have this. You've got a website, you need to know everything about it so you can make decisions. What's working, what's not. Do I need to hire someone to do this? Okay, I've hired someone. Do they know what they're doing? Let me see the data. This data can be shared among various people of the organization. And uh, I, I believe, as I've said on a previous day in, in, in classes, I teach this stuff, but I do this for a living. Our company, PMD Interactive, Dot com, we do this for clients. We set up a website for them. We set up analytics as soon as possible. They hire us to tweet. They hire us to do photos. They hire us for all this stuff. And then we can show here. We can do these monthly reports or quarterly reports to show, look at what happened this month compared to last month. This month we tweeted 10 times. Last month we tweeted 8 times. Look at the difference. So pay us more to tweet more. Yes? put some hooks into your application somehow, and how, how do they... Uh, specifically for the app or the website? How does Google Analytics get the data? Where does it get the data from? When we set up this tracking info, this is JavaScript. This JavaScript here, all of this secret code here, is... Uh, so that's what we'll hook into. Yes, yeah, basically. Page. Exactly. There's some part right here. Window, okay, document. Uh, it's it's adding analytics.javascript. This file right here has a whole bunch of extra mm -hmm. code and magic. But this code basically is analyzing <coughs> the contents of your page with your particular ID. And then that extra JavaScript there is then keeping track of everything. And you put that in every web page, so every time a web page gets hit. Yes, but if you're using something like WordPress, which uses templates, you put it on your main template, and then that'll trickle down to all your pages. If I was doing it in the traditional way of Dreamweaver, for example, I would have to go to all of my pages and copy and paste that code into all my pages manually, unless I'm using Dreamweaver templates or libraries. Yes, I need to add this code to all my pages, and that's how Google can keep track of all of that. Where's that restaurant uh, they use WordPress. Most of the clients that we have nowadays are using WordPress. So all of these sites here, basically, they're all, they're all running WordPress nowadays. It's uh, very powerful and popular. So we're just about getting to the end of the day. We, uh, we looked at these advanced features of, of, of Google Webmaster Tools. There's still plenty that can be learned, of course. This touches upon concepts that we would go into deta more detail over on the SEO class. So yes, I sound like a broken record hyping all my classes, but they all relate to each other, and I recommend them, especially if you're going to build an online presence. Take the WordPress class to learn how to build a website. Take the SEO class to learn how to optimize it to get found and build a marketing plan. Take the social media class to get a foothold on the social networks to get traffic. This class, we had this overview of various <coughs> Google concepts. Take the blogging class. Blogging is an important aspect that's creating content to get found. So those are five classes that relate to each other. You can take them out of order. There's no order, really. You can take them multiple times. Um, and then maybe one day the sixth class is an app. Build an app for your website. So... Any questions on anything we've talked about today or in previous days or future classes or anything? All right, so uh, we'll wrap up and we'll have a little lab time at the end of the day in case anyone wants some individual attention. Thank you for coming.